Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL K4, which is more proofs involving congruent triangles uh, being congruent by angle side angle or angle angle side. Okay, so obviously this is pretty much the same IXL as K2 except we are dealing with ASA and angle angle side compared to SSS and SAS. Um, so you're going to see a diagram here with two congruent triangles. You got to follow these statements, uh, follow the reasons backed up uh, or backing up those statements, and then figure out what the reason is for the statement that is missing a reason. So just kind of a hint, once you get uh, toward the kind of the last statement in your two column proof, that's probably going to be either your ASA or AAS as a solution, okay? Right here, it's probably gonna be the solutions here. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. Okay, so we see that these two triangles are uh, going to end up congruent. And let's follow the reasoning as to why that is. So it's given that TW and UV are going to be parallel. Okay, good, that's given. And then it's also given that they uh, are going to be congruent. And we know that because of the tick mark here. Okay, so automatically we know uh, we, we have one tick for side or one check for side, right? We know one side at least is going to be congruent. Okay, we'll move on. It says TXW, TXW, and UXV, UXV are going to be congruent or the same or equal. So these two angles right here are going to be equal because they're vertical angles, because of the vertical angle theorem, okay? So we have a check mark for a, a side, and we have one for an angle. And then it says we know W and U, so W and U, are going to be congruent because of the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, so that is another check mark for angles. So we have side uh, angle angle, or angle angle side, and that is clearly going to be the reason we choose. Okay. Here we have J is the midpoint of FH. So right here, that's the midpoint. And since we know that is the midpoint, we know that this point J right here splits these two into equal halves. So uh, H to J and J to F are gonna be congruent, right? Two equal halves. So we already have one for uh, side. And we apparently have one for angle already too, right? Both 90 degree angle there. So that says complete the proof. Okay, so We'll go through, we see Fi and Fh are going to be uh, uh, perpendicular, which is indicated by the 90 degree angle there. Good, good, good. Then it says angle F and angle H are going to be congruent because all right angles are congruent. Okay, we established that. Uh, we established that Fj and Hj are congruent already because of the midpoint. And then it says FJI, so FJI and GJH. So these two little angles right here are going to be congruent because of the vertical angle theorem. So we have um, an angle, then a side, then an angle again, meaning we're gonna do ASA. ASA. Okay. So now we're gonna complete the proof that they're both congruent. Okay, so we know RS and PQ are parallel. Great. We know that S and Q are going to be congruent. That's also been given to us, indicated by the single rings. Okay. Uh, it says angle QPR, QPR. So right here, this angle P, kind of half, half of it right there, is going to be equal to PRS, so PRS. So these two angles are going to be congruent right here because of the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, so we have an angle and angle. And then PR, PR uh, is going to be congruent with PR because of the reflexive property of congruence. So that's just saying that we know uh, since these two triangles share this hypotenuse, then it's very clearly going to be the same for both, right? They're sharing the same, uh, the same side. There's no room for variation there. So we have an angle followed uh, here, followed by an angle, followed by a side. So it's gonna be angle, angle, side. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, we are given a lot more here. Uh, we are given that JK is going to be perpendicular to GK. So right there. So that's going to be a right angle. We know that GK is congruent to IH or HI. Okay. And we know that IJ is going to be uh, perpendicular to HI, meaning these are both going to be 90 degree angles, meaning we have an angle. Okay, we also know these two are congruent, meaning we have a side. And then GJK, GJK, so this little part right here, and HJI, HJI, and this uh, little part right here are going to be congruent. So this angle and this angle are congruent. Okay, so we have an angle followed by an angle followed by a side. So that's angle, angle, side. Okay, and this is where I usually stop with my class at, uh, with proofs at the SMART score of 60. If you were to proceed, uh, just keep in mind the uh, reasoning for any steps that are toward the end there are usually going to be AAS or ASA. Uh, just kind of follow the logic. For something like this, the angle for P is congruent with angle P. That's going to be the reflexive property, right, of uh, congruence uh, because they're going to be sharing that angle. Um, and just kind of use the rest of the logic we've used in other uh, proofs for IXL, so the transitive property substitution if you're just changing one thing between steps, substituting one value or um, variable in for another, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so stay safe, study hard, and I'll catch you for the next IXL tutorial. Goodbye.